This is Movie Irv again, and we're here to talk about comic book movies. Biff, Pam, Socko. <laughs> Helping me out here is Owen, who's a big comic book fan and uh, obviously a big movie fan. So we both picked five of our favorite comic book movies. And Owen, I give it to you. What's one of your favorites? I'd like to start with uh, Superman, the movie, the first one. I feel like without that one, you don't really get the rest of them on our lists here. It let Hollywood know that, okay, we can make more of these. Mm -hmm. And eventually you get Batman 89 and... X-Men, Daredevil, and all this other stuff. So I'd say Superman is, is still holds up. It's a little goofy, but it mirrors the comic book, the Superman comic book at the time. It's funny you should mention Superman because I picked Superman 2 mm -hmm. from 1980. I don't know if the people that like one like two as much because two to me is more of a comic book. Uh, one seemed to be introduced to characters who seemed more grounded in reality, but two I like because of the bigger than life villains, especially General Zod. I think he's a fantastic villain, yeah. played by Terrence Stamp, and uh, it's just one I've always enjoyed. On DVD, there's two versions of Superman 2. There's the original version that is credited to Richard Lester, and it's one of the rare occasions where Richard Donner, who directed the first Superman, was kicked off while they were getting Superman 2 together, had a chance to sort of go over it again and give his version and it's it's quite different in tone and uh, you know it's just a different film altogether. So what's your next choice? A lot of uh, people my age maybe a little younger get upset when you don't bring the comic book directly to the screen. You don't get uh, it exactly the way it's written which is ridiculous because most comic books have at least 20 years of history and you can't stick that into a two-hour movie. Mm -hmm. Sin City however is short enough and, and, and good enough that you could put it, it, it was literally translated panel for panel. They did really? the best they, they could hmm. to get it panel from panel and it's in black and white because the book itself is in black and white with splashes of color to highlight important things. Blood, an individual's car, a look in somebody's eye maybe. Drawn and written by Frank Miller. There's a lot of heavy hitters in there, Mickey Rourke, Bruce Willis, just to name a few. So mm -hmm. uh, I put that right up there at the top five for me. And it's a very dark film. It's it's R rated, and it certainly earns its uh, R rating, wouldn't you say? Definitely, definitely does. Not 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 a comic book for the kiddies. <laughs> and one that I think might be for the kiddies, although I showed my kids, and and they went, "This is one of the weirdest movies we ever saw." That why'd you bring this home? Is the 1980 version of Popeye, with um, Robin Williams, and to me the perfect olive oil, Shelley Duvall, <laughs> and um, it just a everybody's matched perfectly to the old comic strip by E.C. Seeger. Uh, you could sort of throw the cartoons out the window because this really <laughs> goes back to the old comic strip. And a lot of people really hated this movie. I have to admit, if you mention it, they joke it was a, you know, in the theaters, even though it actually did well, people see it as a bomb. But I thought it was wonderful. I love the goofy music in it. I think it really creates a world that, that sort of is like a comic strip coming to life. I'll admit, it's definitely offbeat. So what's your next choice? My next choice is a sequel, actually. It's Spider-Man 2. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of heroes that, that I really love. I kind of like them all, but uh, Spider-Man is, is one of them. And when I heard he was coming to the big screen, I was like, oh no. Uh, this is, this, uh, is this gonna be good? Is this gonna be bad? Like, to emulate his powers on screen, was something I was worried about. Now the first one was good, but the second one I thought was better and has the best comic book fight I have ever seen on film between uh, Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. And that's on the, was it on a subway train or no? It starts, it starts on a skyscraper and ends on a subway that's train. Right, so okay. it, it kind of spans the city. So it, it's neat. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you, I think one of the key things in the comic book movies are the villains. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, Doctor Doc Ock is a, is a really good villain. I, I thought he was the best out of that trilogy. My choice for the next one is Men in Black. You know, a lot of people don't even know that it was actually a comic book, and I just had so much fun at this movie. I've seen it a couple times, and I still enjoy it. 
uh, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones really playing off of each other. Mm -hmm. And then now, where is she? Linda Fiorentino in it <laughs> is the, uh, I don't know what happened to her career. But Barry Sonnenfeld, the director, really got it right. I thought it's a perfect superhero stuff, alien stuff, mm -hmm. and, and a certain, you know, offbeat kind of uh, sarcastic charm to the movie that I liked. Up on my top five is Iron Man. He's cool, he's quirky, he's, he's got flaws, but uh, he's basically a good guy, he's a, uh, and he's a hero. Uh, when it's all said and done, just like any of the, other, the, uh, the big guns, he's a real hero. He's been a leading character in the whole Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. um, so it's great to see uh, Robert Downey Jr. portray Tony Stark, his, uh, his alter ego. I, I thought he was perfectly cast. In fact, it, in that movie, there really isn't anybody, I would say, that was poorly cast. Also, there was a great superhero, supervillain fight between him and the Iron Monger at the end. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, my next choice is uh, 2002's The Road to Perdition, which is actually based on a graphic novel by Max Allen Collins, which is actually inspired by a, uh, a series of Japanese films called the Baby Cart series. And uh, that actually was turned into a feature film called Shogun Assassin. They put some of them together. And if you could follow that trajectory, well, good for you. But uh, Road to Perdition, to me, is, is a film that got lukewarm reviews. Uh, it was Tom Hanks playing a bad guy, I think the first time in his career right. where he did that. And I thought it's just a beautifully made film, period film. Jude Law, before he became a bigger star, uh, kind of plays the villain in it. It's a period gangster film. And, um, you know, you wouldn't know it, was, it came from comic origins, but I thought it was wonderfully done. And I have to say it's one of Paul Newman's uh, last performances, too, so it's worth seeing for that as well. And um, the next film. My next one uh, happens to be uh, the best, in my opinion. Um, a, a comic book film, uh, when it tackles a character like Batman or, or Superman, uh, in this case it's the Dark Knight, so it's Batman, has to take into account, what, 50 years of history? And uh, Nolan's rendition of, of Bat not only Batman, but the Batman universe mm -hmm. is, uh, is fantastic. And one of the, it, it's the best portrayal, in my mind, of, of any comic book universe. E every actor in there is very well cast, I think, and, and, and play their role. Um, Gary Oldman plays Commissioner Gordon, for example. It's a fantastic actor. Uh, that version of the commissioner before he was the commissioner or he's just the kind of a, de mm -hmm. a detective up and coming lieutenant um, is from the comic book Batman Year One. And in Batman Year One, he looks like Gary Oldman, Heath Ledger. Uh, you talked earlier about uh, a good bad guy. Mm -hmm. He was the best to date, in my opinion. He brought Joker something new. He, he, he changed him up. He made him kind of a, a guy that was just totally about chaos with no rhyme or reason that was his whole purpose was to bring chaos to the world and 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 it was up to batman to fix it the dark knight is uh, a great movie as well as a great comic book movie mm -hmm. okay uh he picks the dark knight which is the second of the reboot i guess uh, yes that batman. Nolan did and the first one is batman begins was the first one which is a solid movie as well but for me it wasn't batman enough to mm -hmm. be batman mm -hmm. okay and so I, I'm going with the Dark Knight on this one. Okay. And I'm going exactly the opposite <laughs> with the same character in the 1966 Batman the movie. I mean, this is the complete opposite of Christopher Nolan's approach, the way he used the Dark Knight for the character. This is a campy, colorful, comic booky movie with Adam West as Batman, Burt Ward, lots of bad puns, lots of Biff, Pam, Sacco, Bash kind of stuff, and it has four of the greatest villains you'll ever see under one roof. You have the Penguin, played by Burgess Meredith. You have Catwoman, played by Lee Merriweather in the film. You have the Riddler, played by Frank Gorshin. And of course, you have the Joker, played by Cesar Romero. And this movie is all sorts of weird bat contraptions, uh, lots of fighting, the interplay between Burt and Adam, and uh, it, it's the whole essence of the 60s pop camp sensibility all in one film. So that's my final choice. This is Movie Irv here with my pal Owen talking comic book movies. Biff, Pam, Sacco!